Hey, thanks for clicking on Wayne.com for the first edition of Inside the Zone. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss, Justin Kinney. Now with Ops, tell us a little bit about your role there, no longer at the new Sentinel. Yeah. A new opportunity has arisen for you. Same look, but a different look, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, same face, different logo on the shirt. So over there doing some media relations, I get to hang out with good Glenn Marini for a little bit. Uh, that's one of the big benefits media. of the package. That, that is, together. that was on the top of the, the top of the job description. Forget salary, just hang out. It said, Glenn Marini, where do I sign? Boom. So uh, yeah, doing that, social media. A little marketing, a little dabble in marketing, so really excited. A little a jack of all trades, if you will. Absolutely. Uh, well, we're glad to have you back for your expertise, and we're going to start off uh, week one in the SAC. Some pretty good matchups. Uh, Wayne and Bishop Dwenger will be our highlight zone game of the week. Uh, what do you see as being the key in this one? Because we've always talked about Wayne's potential. They've been building for this year with a bunch of freshmen that didn't win a game. Uh, four years ago. Now, Craig Young and the company, they're seniors, and Dwenger is just, they've got a new head coach, but they seem to be very Dwenger-esque, and they, they're not going to shoot themselves in the foot. Yeah, and th it's a very similar vibe to what we had last year prior to the week one getting started, where Wayne was the darling, the sweetheart. This was the year, and then they made too many mistakes, too many turnovers, too many penalties, lose 27 to 12 week one to Dwanger. Now we're here in 2018 and, and it's once again, what's Wayne going to do here week one? They have to get a win like this for me to truly buy into the general. So this is a big week for them. And I, I look at Craig Young and you could say he's one of the more talented players in the state of Indiana from a physical perspective. Um, but we have not seen the numbers pop up like you would yeah. think they would for a recruit that's going to Ohio State. Last year he was used a little bit more as a decoy. Do you see him having kind of a breakout season? Because now he's going to go to Ohio State. He's going to play on the defensive side of the football. I was talking to Joe Tip from, Tipman from Dwenger. Apparently when they lined him up at defensive end last year, the guy was basically unstoppable because he's so big and fast. Yeah. Um, how do you see his senior season playing out, knowing that we're kind of waiting for him to have those numbers and produce? I hope to see a very Austin Mack-esque senior mm. season for yeah. Craig Young because you saw flashes of Austin Mack sophomore year, junior year, had troubles with drops at times, but senior year he was unstoppable. And I think that could be Craig Young on both sides of the ball for Wayne. And I think you, you hope to see Wayne utilize Craig Young offensively more than they did last year. A lot of the times they used Craig Young as a decoy instead of using Craig Young as a ball carrier, as a pass receiver. So you hope to see the game plan built around a guy like Craig Young. When you take a look at what Bishop Dwenger does, no Chris Schwartzkopf. That's got to be a change. It's not just the change at the top as Jason Garrett takes over. They've got Casey Kolkman now moving in a defensive coordinator. Coach Watercutter is gone. They've, they've moved some parts around uh, both in terms of the head coach and in terms of the coaching staff. Do you see anything changing or is it kind of business as usual for them? I don't think you see any major schematic changes on the field. I don't think you see a, a big culture shift for Bishop Dwenger. But I think you may see a, a bigger onus on certain aspects of the football game. Do you, do you see more of them go vertical than what they did before? Do you see them maybe mix up schematically defensively, show some different looks out of their base defense? I think those are the things that you're going to see out of Dwenger. But by and large, uh, you are going to see the same Bishop Dwenger Saints as we saw with Chris Schwartzkopf. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Absolutely, it's a, and, and it's, this, a this a big, it's a big game for Bishop Dwenger. Obviously, Jason Garrett's first game on Friday, and uh, a lot of eager eyes are going to be both on Bishop Dwenger and Wayne. Carolyn Lures is another game that's certainly intriguing in week one. It was our game of the week uh, last year in week one. Both of them have graduated some talented players, uh, specifically Carol, Jack Miguel. I think he was, I think he was almost underrated as a QB. I have written out here, underappreciated as a quarterback, Jack Miguel. Great 20, minds, great 2, minds. 2,500 yards passing, oh, 22 touchdowns. I mean, he was. He was underappreciated in the area last year. Uh, Justin Becker obviously was big at the receiver position. Jonathan Becker was big. So they've got to replace some playmakers. Gavin Vogt moves from wide receiver back, essentially, to quarterback. Yeah. Um, how do you see this playing out? Doug Dynan has really, we talk about it every year, he's changed the culture of that program where they expect to win six, seven, eight, nine games and then, yeah. you know, do their best and make a run in the playoffs. Yeah, here's my thing with this game. We saw Bishop Lewis beat Carroll last year. And if you look over the last three years since Carroll and Homestead have joined the SAC, this is the only win for Bishop Lewis over the big three of Carroll, Homestead, and Snyder. 
And I think that goes to the fact that Bishop, du Bishop Lures just gets wore down over the course of the season. This is not a very deep Bishop Lures mm -hmm. team. So I think as you get later in the season, the Homesteads and the Snyders can really wear Bishop Lures down. But like last year, the Knights, when they're fully healthy at the beginning of the year, feeling eager, they can beat a team like Carroll. Kyle Lindsay says this every year. I mean, we could run the sound by year in and year out at the beginning of practice. For Lures, because they're a smaller school in the SAC, it's all about linemen. Offensive linemen, defensive linemen, they have trouble, I guess, finding the number of bodies and, yeah. and the depth up front on both sides of the line. But Norman Kanapke's back. He's an experienced quarterback. Jordan Presley still holds the record at Homestead with 1,700 yards a couple years ago. He got kind of uh, dinged up a little bit last year and kind of lost in the mix. Yeah, with Tyron Hambright. With, with yeah. Hambright, who's playing at Indiana State. So they, they utilize both of them. But they've got two very experienced leaders on offense. How do they – put things together, you know, because I think we expected Jordan Presley to have this monster season last year, and he had a good season, but we expect him to kind of be a star. Yeah, and that's the difficulty, like you mentioned, Bishop Luer is competing against some of these teams that don't have as many guys going both ways. We saw Presley play both ways. We saw Justin Gaston play both ways last year. Uh, Tyron Hambright played both ways. That's the problem with Bishop Luer they don't have enough bodies. And when you add two 6A schools into this conference, mm -hmm. that's automatically two more teams that Lures has to play that they're badly outmanned. And, and that's the problem with teams. We've seen Concordia have a limited amount of success, but mm -hmm. you need a special roster to have some consistent success against the Carrolls, the Homesteads, and the Snyders. And Lures has the athletes. Do they have the linemen, to your point? Do they have the depth? Last year they did week one. We'll find out if they do again on Friday. Oh, the rest of the SAC looks like this. Northside at Snyder, Northrop at Homestead, Concordia at Southside. Obviously, Homestead's got to replace Jaya Wright, who was everybody's player of the year last year, now at Northern Illinois. But uh, as far as Snyder goes, I saw them scrimmage against Homestead the other day. They got off to a little slower start. They're looking for a new quarterback, as Michael Hoppert is now at Indiana State, um, looking to replace some key defensive pieces with Lawrence Johnson up front and also Austin France, at linebacker. Yeah. Um, but is Snyder still the team to beat in your eyes for the SAC? Snyder is Alabama. Until somebody knocks them off the perch, they're the number one. Uh, it's so easy to say, well, Snyder lost this, this, this. They always have a next group coming up. And I think that's where Snyder is right now. The uncertainty with Snyder, particularly at the quarterback position, uh, gives you maybe a, an idea that maybe a Dwanger, maybe a Homestead can sneak up into that conversation. But until somebody beats them. Uh, they're not number one, and, I, and I'm number one by a significant margin right now. Really? Why don't you take a look at Homestead? They're 8-2 they're and two last year. The two losses to Snyder. Snyder down at Lucas Oil Stadium in week five, I believe, and then Snyder in the playoffs. They, they weren't that far away, albeit they had a special quarterback. They did, but neither of those games were really close. I mean, the one in, in Lucas Oil Stadium, close for a little bit, you know. Um, if I remember that 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 punt return for a touchdown late in the first half or the kickoff, whatever it was, really kind of broke Homestead's back. They were trading scores there for a while down there, but that was with Jaya Wright at quarterback. Now, mm -hmm. do they go Luke Goody? Do they go Jake Archibald? Do they go a combination of the two uh, behind center for Homestead? That's still unknown. They were, they were split in series last Friday in the scrimmage. So big questions for Homestead, but they return enough pieces I think that they're in the conversation in the upper echelon. I was going to say, side. do you think that they've closed the gap a little, or is it still the same? I think they've closed the gap at certain positions. I think up front they can match up with Snyder. Porter Hot, pretty good. Porter Hot's a pretty big dude. And I think they have some other big guys in there, guys like uh, those defensive guys that they can throw in there. Mm -hmm. I think there's some talented guys there. Trevin Taylor is as good a wide receiver as you're going to find in the SAC. So they have pieces. It's just all about winning the battle, those individual battles against Snyder. You have to win 10 or 11 individual battles on any given play consistently to beat Snyder. Homestead's not there yet. I, I like Concordia. They've got Southside this week. Last year we were like, oh, man, they're going to drop off. Their whole senior class graduated. They're smaller in the SAC. They go out and win seven games, which is pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, Jake Bird is back at quarterback. His thumb is better. Kamari Anderson Drew put up 1,000 yards last year playing a third of the season with a freshman third-string quarterback as the yeah. starter. You know, 1,000 yards in high school for a receiver is a ton. Um, how have they been able to do that, and can they take another step? Because, like you mentioned, there seems to be a little uncertainty uh, in the SAC this year. Well, the big question with Concordia previous years before the state title run was they just don't have bodies. 
Tim Hanniger was always like, if I can get a half dozen, eight more kids out here where I don't have as many guys going both ways, mm -hmm. similar to where Bishop Lures is right now, mm -hmm. is, man, it would play dividends. And I think that state run has given Tim Manigal those extra eight to ten guys that he needs. So the Kamari Andersons, Drew of the world, the Jake Birds of the world, they don't have to play both ways. Uh, you know, you had guys last year that didn't have to play both ways unless absolutely needed. So I think it builds a little bit of depth for Concordia. Now they've always had athletes. They were just always outmanned. Now they can kind of pick and choose where they use some of these guys. 